It's the Up and Country Show, where the heart of Nashville matches thrilling adventures with rising country artists. I'm your host, Sue Bonzel. Join us as we explore the vibrant Nashville area alongside talented musicians, combining exhilarating escapades with exclusive interviews and energetic live performances. Each week, we dive into the captivating world of country music, showcasing the next generation of artists who are poised to make their mark on the industry. Let's get it started. This week, I'm checking out Cooter's Place in Nashville and all of the Dukes of Hazard memorabilia. Plus, I'm meeting up with Way Jennings. Next up, I'm back at Sam Ash Music to chat with rising country pop artist Caleb Seth. Okay, let's hit it. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. We are at Cooter's Place in Nashville. I am thrilled to be here with Way Jennings. First off, we got to talk about some uh, some pretty cool stuff that happened to you just recently. So you're you're at the Opry. You're there for a show to uh, enjoy the show, right? I guess I wasn't as incognito as I thought I was. <laughs> well, you don't really have an incognito look. Well, no, not really. I guess not. I guess. So uh, so Chris Jansen's on stage. I made it through the whole show. Intermission came, and then I turned around, and it was like a line of people to take pictures, so I took pictures with a bunch of people. And then out comes Chris Jensen, who I've never met before in my life. Put on a great show, then he walked over to the side of the stage and he pointed at me, yelled my name, shook my, went to shake my hand and he just yanked me up on stage and I was like, ah! Wasn't planning on that at all, so it's kind of crazy. Now, was that a, a first time on the Grand Ole Opry stage? Yep, yes it sure was. Yeah, and I did not think that was gonna be how I did that. that yeah, you kind of the unconventional way, right? Yeah, well, that's... what I hear, you don't get on the Opry stage unless you're invited there by the Opry. <laughs> well, you but... were sort of invited. Well, in a roundabout sort of way, In a roundabout right? sort of way, yeah. <laughs> uh, your grandfather, Waylon Jennings, uh, mm -hmm. your uncle, Shooter Jennings. Tell us about growing up with with that as a legacy. Well, you know, it's just like, just like growing up with any other legacy, you know what I mean? Uh, our family business is music, and we take it seriously, and we do the best we can with it. My grandfather left a great path for us to follow. We could choose to follow that path or veer off that path and do our own thing. And I've called, I'm sort of on the sidewalk next to it, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I just love, I love his music. I love my grandmother's music. I love all of his friends' music. That's literally the only thing I've gravitated to my whole life, you know, with old country music, because it's just the way I live. When did you kind of figure out, okay, yeah, you know what? I kind of want to follow in the family business. Well, I didn't think I was going to for the longest time. I worked on a cotton farm for about 10 years. <laughs> and uh, then my mother asked me to do something with music. And I said, okay, I'll try to do it. And I went out there and I tried to do it. And I've been doing it ever since. I did it wrong for a lot of years, you know what I mean? But I'm doing it pretty good now. What do you mean by wrong? I didn't have any clue what I was doing. I was like, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and I'm just going to book a bunch of shows. I'm going to be a cover band to start with. I'm going to write a bunch of songs. And then I'm just going to start putting my songs in and taking his songs out. And that's what I, I did for the longest time. I was, you know, all wrapped up in the rock and roll lifestyle mm. for a long time. The party. You know, the party meant more to me than anything else at that point in my life. And... Now I'm at a point in my life where I realized I was the wrong path. I've been sober for about four years, and I've been putting my nose at the grindstone and getting it all done. Well, I'd love to ask you about um, what faith has done for you in, in your life. I know you did kind of a turnaround for you. Um, Tell us about that in your life now. Well, I've always had faith in God, you know what I mean? But it was just, it's always been like an in inward battle for me, you know what I mean? Like, when I was really, really young, I went to church a lot as a kid. I fell asleep in the church pew a lot, you know? <laughs> as I got older, I started playing football. You know, and I still had this good spirit to me and everything, but I got hurt playing football. And back then in school, they had this no pass, no play rule. So whenever I couldn't play anymore, I was like, well, no play, no pass. And that was the <laughs> stupidest mistake I could ever make. So I started hanging out with the wrong crowd, started doing drugs and drinking. At that point, I started, I was, I'd always read the Bible because my mom always had a Bible open in, in the house. But at that point, I started trying to pick it apart. I started looking at it from the other side, the wrong side, and trying to prove the Bible wrong. And I'm telling you this right now, if you do as much drugs as I did, and you dig through that Bible as hard as you as I did, you can't prove it wrong, then it's not wrong. Ooh, I I'm like telling that. You. So as I got older and I got sober, and I started reading it for the right reasons, I realized that uh, I was really blessed by God. He saved my life. 
because I should have died a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, he saved my life and brought me here to do something. So I'm trying to do the best I can with what I got. You sound a lot like Waylon Jennings. Yeah, I just talked to somebody about that not long ago. It was like, you know, what's it like being the grandson of Waylon Jennings? I said, it's probably a lot different than being Waylon Jennings. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> Waylon Jennings was Waylon Jennings, and that's all you had to compare Waylon Jennings to was Waylon Jennings. That's right. And all he ever did was be himself, and he did the best he could with what he had. That's literally all I'm trying to do. I'm yeah. trying to do the best I can with what I got and be the best me I can be. And there ain't nothing about me fake. You know what I mean? If you see Waylon Jennings in me, that's probably because he's my grandfather. You know what I mean? But this is who I am and this is the way I live my life. You know, and it's, I can't help what I sound like or who I am because I don't know how to be fake. You know, all I know how to do is be me. We like who you are, I kind of like me too. Oh, I like you. Yeah, I like, I like me a lot more these days than I used to. All right. right. You know, obviously you've played a lot of Waylon Jennings songs. What would be your favorite Waylon Jennings song? All of them. <laughs> I ain't got one I don't like. You know what I mean? I, I, I tell you what, I was listening to my grandfather my whole life. Not very pe many people can stump me when it comes to Waylon Jennings songs. It's never been able to happen in all the years I've been alive. And I can't find one that I don't like. Not even because he's my grandfather. It's because he's a great musician. It, absolutely. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let me being his grandson stop me from being one of his biggest fans. Because I, I am. I love my grandfather's music. He did a great job. I love the simplicity of it, and I love the complexity of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just unique in every way. Like you have got some new music coming out, is that correct? Oh, yeah, it's been coming out all year. Okay, it's, well, it's, tell us what you got. Well, we got a new EP coming out. It's called uh, Just Before the Dawn. It's the most powerful EP I've ever put out. Sat down with a bunch of friends of mine at different times, and we wrote a bunch of songs, and uh, they all kind of hit home. The first one we put out was Wild Child, and it's a song about yours truly. <laughs> you know? Uh, about how I used to be a wild child, like a freight train running. You know, I met a woman, fell in love, changed my life, and now I'm just, you know, it's a good damn thing. This old boy's settling down. It says it right there in the song. By, by settling down, I mean not out there partying no more. I still bring the party, by the way. You know, <laughs> I'm very good at what I do. I come and I, and I make sure everybody has a good time. Good. So don't ever worry about that. Yeah, that was the first one. And then the second one we put out was called Old Country Song. He's like, I got this song I'm writing about the possum. And he said, ain't nothing wrong with a possum song. Ain't nothing wrong with a possum song. I was like, well, we probably ought to play off that. We're going to go to the next verse, going to be somebody else, and the next verse is going to be somebody else. Oh, and we chose Merle Haggard and Waylon Jennings. And the way the lyrics flow, I saw it in my head that we should film this video at a pool table so that we, we can pass it back and forth, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. Like a game of pool. Right. And then the next one that came out was called Daredevil. And Daredevil I wrote for my wife, my beautiful wife, Taryn. She's, she's really been a strong force in my life. And the next one, is my favorite song on the EP. It's a song that I believe is going to change lives. It's called Just Before the Dawn. And I hope you all enjoy that video because we I get shot in it, by the way. Put it right my wrong. No one knows how dark it is. Just before the dawn. I didn't realize I was going to have such a crazy effect on people, but I had a couple people I showed the videos to and I turned around and they were crying. I was like, what are you crying about? I was like, well, you got shot. I was like, I, was like, I didn't really get shot. Because that's the direction I'm trying to go with my music now. I want to change lives with my music. I don't want to just bring a party and sing songs about, you know, just anything. I want to sing songs about things that matter, about God. I want to sing about success stories. And by success story, I mean people who have knocked themselves down to the point they were at rock bottom and digging a hole and they got back up on their feet and they climbed back up to the top of that mountain and screamed victory. Yeah. You know I mean? That's the kind of music I want to do. And that's the kind of music I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's the power of country music, right? Yes, ma'am. Roscoe, we're in town need to know you. Come in. Now, sugar, before you get yourself all head up, things just happen to be different in hazard. I used to be a wild child like a freight train running. Pedal to the floor, keep the good times coming. Out all night like a wild cat on the prowl. Nowadays I got a wife and a baby, a peace of mind and a little less crazy. It's a good damn thing, this old boy settling down. Truth or truth? Truth or truth. Do you want to play it? Well, yeah, sure. I All play right. truth or truth. I like truth. Okay. I'm a pretty truthful guy. <laughs> Let's see here. How does it feel? <laughs> Have you ever 
accidentally hit something or someone with your car. <laughs> I got a great driving record. Okay. I, I got a lot of speeding tickets, <laughs> but um, I'm a great driver. Uh, let's see. Where's the worst physical pain you've ever experienced? That's easy. Toothache. Really? Yeah. Really? Toothache's the worst physical pain anybody okay. will ever experience. Ever, okay. No, like, major accidents or broken bones or... Nope, never broke a bone. I don't know how I've never broke a bone because I am not a safe guy. We do know how. Oh, we got a blessing of God. Yeah. Uh, that's it even how said, we it know. even says so. As long as you write right by God, you will never break a bone. It says that. What's the most common misconception about you? Uh, probably that I'm an outlaw. Oh, you know, okay. I'm, I'm really a very, very God-oriented man. I'm a family man. I, I, my family comes first. I mean, God comes first. My family comes second. I live my life for my family. So I am not an outlaw anymore. There you go. There you go. We got the real facts now. How do you feel about kind of the new outlaw country like sound that's happening right now? Like Zach Bryan and Chris Stapleton and Well, Dave I love Zimmerman. music. You know what I mean? I love music. I believe there's a place for all music. You know what I mean? I'm a really big Chris Stapleton fan. His voice is something amazing. I haven't heard much of Zach Bryan. I do know that he's a real outlaw. I just read in the news. He just <laughs> got in trouble with the law. Jamie Johnson is yes. the top of the mark for me. But, you know, I like everybody's music. My, my whole deal is is that I was always on this train when I was younger where I was going to be mad at people for making their art because it wasn't the art that I thought they should mm, be making. I'm not that guy no more. Everybody has their own art that they're making, you know what I mean? And there's a place for all of it. What I should have been mad at this whole time was that there should still be a place for old country, and it's like they're trying to get rid of that. And I'm really, really against getting rid of our history, you know what I mean, our heritage. If you start tearing down stuff, people forget about it, then they just do the same things over again. So that's just where I'm at in my life. I, I do not hate anybody. I love everybody for the art they make. I've got nothing but heart, love in my heart for just about anybody. Any, uh, any collaborations you'd like to do? Oh, I'd like to collaborate with Chris Jensen. Oh, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie Johnson. <laughs> okay, now that is something that I want to see. And I'd also like to collaborate with my family. I'd like to get all my family together once yes. and do something. You know, I mean, one of these days. Okay. But it needs to be at the right time. We've all got to be in the right state of mind. It's got to be for the right reason. It's got to be the right project. So in order for all the stars to align that I need to align to do the collaborations I want to, I'm going to need a lot of help from the good Lord above and a lot of help from the people around me. Well, we're going to look forward to all of those things. Oh, yeah. They're all going to happen. I just manifested it. You, we all did. It. It's all See, going to happen. You just said it out loud. This is what happens on my show, too. We just, you know, we say things and then stuff just happens. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm a very blessed man. God has put a lot of people in my life that needs to be in my life, and he's done a lot of things for me. So. All right. These are cowboy wisdom. So cowboy these are wisdom. like uh, just some little cards for inspiration. And so far, I've had pretty good luck for, like, the people that pick them. Like, it, it kind of, like, means something. So we'll see we'll See what it means for you. Okay. Let's see here. Cowboy wisdom. Friendship isn't about who you've known the longest. It's about who walked into your life and said, I'm here for you and proved it. That's really yes. everybody that's in my life right now. I was going to say, know? do you have some people like that in your life? I got a bunch of wonderful people in my life. You know, I really do. A lot of, a lot of them stuck by me when they really didn't have to. And, you know. I love it. Thank you so much, Way, for being here and answering my questions. And I uh, really appreciate you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all be good. We're at Sam Ash, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and Caleb Seth is with me. Welcome, Caleb. Thank you for having me over here. Okay. Now, you've had a lot of different influences as far as different styles of music that you like, right? Yeah. Um, how did you, you kind of land on country? Because I'm from a very small town, and as you know, I grew up here in a lot of country, and it just, I felt like it fit my voice. It just felt, fit my tone and my, like what I wanted to go for. I like the live sounding country, and I like that better than like pop and stuff. So, how old were you when you first started playing music? I was like twelve. I wanted to I wanted to play the drums first, and then I got on piano, and I couldn't stop from there. It was it was over with after that. Any do you do you play any uh, uh, guitars or anything like that? Yeah, I like guitar too, but it's it's not my like main instrument. So I'd so say. it's piano. Piano is my main. I instrument. like yeah. it. I like it. Uh, what's happening? What are your plans here in the next couple of months? So I'm going to be dropping a lot of songs in the next few months, like maybe every two weeks or so. Just going to be dropping some music on the people, seeing where it goes. I feel like these tracks are, 
are some really good songs. So we'll see where it goes. I can't help it. I just love some fishing, drinking beer, sitting back and listening to them good old country songs that my granddaddy put me on. It's so good to see you here. I know you feel it. What I feel in West Tennessee, and that's the place to be. I really like your sound, and yeah. it's kind of, uh, you know, you've got the country vibe, uh, but you kind of have a little bit of that pop sound, too, mm -hmm. that, that's really popular right now. Um, and I think it's I think it's resonating, obviously, with yeah. your fans and everything. The only person that didn't see a red flag was me. Cause you wildfire, I should've known I would get burned just like a hot stove. But I was tired of playing it safe, so I took a little risk on your toxic trace. You if you had to uh, pick maybe a country artist that you would like to open up for, uh, who oh. would be who would be top of the list? Right now, honestly, Wallen. <laughs> of okay, course, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I would like to open for Morgan Wallen also, yeah. and I don't play any music, so. <laughs> who wouldn't want to? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you were adopted when you were younger, uh, mm -hmm. seven years old. I got split up when I was young. You know, my parents were kind of going through things, and then we, me and my siblings got split up. Mm -hmm. And then it came that my aunt found us and like reunited us together, and she had, she ended up adopting us after a while. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I started getting into the music because my cousin, he bought me a little twenty dollar keyboard, and then I started playing it. And like once I touched it, I never stopped. Seriously. So he he just got me a piano off Craigslist, and I started playing. See, look at that. If you got the dream and you, you gotta feel want like, it. You gotta that's want right, that's, that's right. And you've worked hard so far and mm -hmm. you got a lot ahead of you, which I'm excited uh, to see where you go and uh, and what's next for you. But I wanna play a little game with you. Okay. You ready for a little game? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's not sure. Okay, not a, nobody's sure about this game. It's truth or truth. I haven't stacked the deck or anything, so you can just go ahead and pick whichever card okay. you like what's your biggest prank you've ever played on someone are you a prank guy not really a prankster okay maybe just a simple little boo around the corner when they they come around the corner <laughs> and you shock them that's about it <laughs> pretty laid back when it comes to those things I don't really like to get pranked either I was so just I gonna say has anybody guess, pranked you yeah I've been pranked before like you know a little icing your shirt and stuff like that I don't I don't like pranks that much okay honestly. fair enough we know we know now no <laughs> pranks What's your most embarrassing thing you have ever done? Oh, okay. This <laughs> is, I've definitely had some embarrassing moments, but I remember one time, like in middle school, I think, in art class, my pants fell completely down, and that was embarrassing. <laughs> it wasn't something I did on purpose, but in front of the whole class and everything, so that was pretty embarrassing, but that's the first thing that came to mind. And that's kind of like, like when you're in junior high, too. It's like the worst. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And exactly. were there any, the like, worst time. is there, like, anybody you liked in class that you were like? Oh. Yeah, yeah, there was a few girls in there that I <laughs> 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 Yeah, so it, it was embarrassing, but everybody blew it off. They didn't really pay too much attention. Okay, good. It, so. Well, we, we'll try not to remember that <laughs> as you become famous and, you know, put it in. Oh, wait, we just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, now it's out there. Now, the people now it's out there. Everybody knows about it. It's okay. <laughs> you recovered well. What's your cowboy wisdom? The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. That's and who said that? Dolly Parton. Jeez, that's a good Dolly one, Parton, right? yeah, that, that really is a good one. <laughs> that was perfect for our yeah. country music, too, so yeah. there you go. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here today. We wish you all the best uh, with your career. going to be following uh, Caleb Seth on all the socials, and uh, you got a little bit of music on Spotify, too, so uh, we'll be checking that out. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Join me, Sue Bonzel, every week for interviews and adventures with rising country artists on Up and Country. Nashville. 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 Yeah, I moved to Pennsylvania. Now I'm a Texas oh, <laughs> oh, you got really short really quick. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ten feet tall and bulletproof, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Here at uh, Cooter's Place in Nashville yeah. with the General Lee. Yeah, man. They told me I could take it home. After okay. After we get done. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to... Oh, boy. <laughs> 
How about if I just do this? Give him one of these. There's that. There you go. That's nice. Have you ever been fired from a job? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's any better. I mean, <laughs> let me think here. Have I ever been fired? Yes, I. Well, I can't tell that story either. Do another. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on a job interview right now. <laughs> know, right? Have you ever had a run in with the law? I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so appreciate much. It. Really appreciate you. Great Thank time. You. All right, make sure you cut out all the goofy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Way sues good people. <laughs> I'm ready for my interview. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're a good buddy, Way.